<laughs> All right. So our topic then is real living. Uh, some are literally living life in the fast lane. And we find that, you know, that they are really, uh, and it's great that uh, uh, the Garda can catch them, uh, those uh, with the speed cameras can catch them, and many have been taken to court uh, because they're going at a huge, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of miles down the motorway, uh, and they're, um, you know, some of them having uh, neither license or uh, anything at all and just driving a car dangerously. Uh, down there, you know. So it's good that they have been taking them in and uh, catching criminals and different things like that. So it's definitely some are living a uh, life in the fast lane and it's good that they get caught. Um, not a great uh, lane to be traveling in. So how do we view real life? That's what we have to think about. Well, how do we view real life? Uh, what is real life all about? Uh, and what is the importance and how can we really live the good life, the real life uh, that's uh, for us necessary? You know, some are uh, a workaholic and of course we have to, we have to do work and, uh, and uh, it can be quite, uh, quite busy at times. And uh, there's pleasureaholic, <laughs> you know. And uh, after pleasure seeking and enjoying all that sort of thing, and uh, that's what they're living for. <coughs> One fellow told me when I was uh, working in the insurance, oh, I'm just living for just how much I give my mother some, uh, you know, to keep me uh, house money. And uh, I uh, uh, working out to see how much drinking money I have for, for uh, the end of the week. And so some of them are just... Uh, totally drunk there uh, and then they have to go and uh, wait and work then and hopefully they'll manage on to get uh, uh, the pay at the, for the end of the week. So there it is. Very sad indeed but let's uh, come to the reading and we'll ask uh, Sam please if you would read uh, the first one. Uh, okay. Thank you. 1 Peter 4, verse 1 to 6. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of man, but for the will of God. Sorry, I'm sleeping. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the, the will of the, the, the gentles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, uh, revelries, drinking, drinking parties, and abom abominable idolatry. In regard to this, they think it, it's strange that you, you do not run with them in the same flood of uh, dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was, was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Amen. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. 
and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to him, to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, uh, Dave, we ask you to pray, please. My gracious Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, we do praise and thank you again for this time, even be it a last time for us together on uh, in this way on Zoom. But Lord, we do give thanks that you have made uh, allowances for all of this, Lord during this pandemic and uh, that uh, the internet was available to use and is now being used in the right way Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, in your glory and to your honor and for the fellowship of one another in this way we may not bodily be meeting together lord but we are coming together with you mm -hmm. in that promise that where two or three meet in your name even mm -hmm. over zoom you are there amongst us father you are there with us guiding and leading as John has prayed this morning, and I pray again, that you again, you would lead and guide him <clears throat> in bringing your word to us. Speak to us as you've spoken before, Lord, um, especially the last, the, the last few meetings together. They've been, for me personally, very beneficial, Lord, and um, applying what I've heard into my life. And Father, open our eyes, open my eyes, open our ears open our hearts and open our minds to the understanding and the application that we can put this word into our own lives, for your glory, for your honor. And Father, we do give thanks again for being able to meet on this your Sabbath day, Lord. We give thanks not only for ourselves, but we ask again that as we, we receive the blessing, as we ask for now, mm. as many who come in this way, this wonderful creation of yours, Lord, who know you for themselves, or they too will be wonderfully blessed, even through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. We ask that all, all through this wonderful creation, Lord, those that are suffering through the pandemic, those who are grieving, those who are actually in hospital going through it, Lord. And Father, even through all this, there are wars, and especially that uh, war in, in mm -hmm. Israel, Lord, we ask there that you would be with those and calm that situation there as well. Lord. But be with us all now, we pray. We ask for ourselves, we ask for our brothers and sisters as well as I pray before. Lord. Mm. But especially those that are under persecution, your persecuted church, Lord. Mm. We do pray for them and them and their families as well. Lord. Especially those that can't get to them to reassure them or to help them in any way. And so, Father, hear us not for our many words. 
but hear us for our, for those that uh, we bring forth now, and even those prayers that we haven't spoken, but are in our hearts now, mm -hmm. and for those that we speak of, and those unheard of, Lord, from our lips, but you know them, so be with us now, guide and lead us in and through your word, and give John that blessing from his mouth to us, Lord. we ask it in Jesus' mm -hmm. name, amen.